Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today I'm going to be starting another What If on The Walking Dead. This one is What If Kenny and Lily Swapped Places. Now this premise could lead to a few different interpretations, so I'll just kind of run by what I mean by this. The idea behind the title is that after season 1, Kenny and Lily are both alive and appear later on in the series. But what if we swapped where they ended up? How would things change with Lily appearing in Season 2 and Kenny being with the Delta in Season 4? So this is kind of like a two-prong what if, since we'll have Season 2 and 4 being changed, as well as how Lily and Kenny's characters develop. I actually thought up this idea a long time ago and began scripting it, but after seeing all the comments telling me to do it as well, I've decided to finally finish the script and bring it to you guys. So let's not waste any more time and dive straight into the story. To begin this changing of events, we pick up after Season 1, Episode 3 of The Walking Dead. We're going to have Lily continue to wander around after being left by the group or stealing the RV, but one day, she finds herself losing her will to go on. After what she had done to Carly slash Doug, she's in a confused state where she regrets what she did, but isn't quite sure what to do with that regret. But instead of continuing on and finding the Delta, who help her brush aside regret in favor of a strong yet withered view of morality, she is attacked by a few walkers. Normally, this isn't too much of a challenge for her, but with how long she's been on the road and how hard supplies are to come by, Lily is at her weakest point and that's both physically and emotionally. So the three walkers are able to press her, and while she is able to kill one, the other two start to overpower her. Lily is able to break free, barely fighting them off long enough to kill another, but the final walker grabs her, causing her to drop her weapon and get shoved into a corner. Lily struggles against the last walker, but her body and mind prove to be too battered to save herself. But then a loud shot rings out, and the walker drops dead. Lily quickly shoves the deceased body away and scrambles for her weapon. As she clutches the weapon, she looks up to see a woman holding a gun. The woman keeps it aimed, though it's very clear she doesn't want to shoot. Lily pants heavily, asking what she wants, and seeing the state Lily is in, she lowers the gun. After that, the woman tells her that she doesn't want anything, and she heard what was going on and wanted to help. It's been ages since she's seen any other living people. Lily is confused, getting to her feet and questioning why she isn't going to rob or kill her, and the woman replies that she isn't like that. She's just another survivor on her own out here. The two hear the sounds of groans approaching, and the woman tells Lily that they should get going. Lily is confused by her inclusion of both of them, but sees no real other choice due to her current state. The two head off, and once safe, they hunker down for the night. The woman asks Lily's name, and she tells her, quickly following with the same question. She replies that her name is Sarita. The two have a small talk about what led them to this point, with Lily not giving up nearly as much information as Sarita does. She's very untrusting of people, and just confused on if she even deserves that trust herself. Later on, Sarita asks her what her plans are for the next day, to which Lily responds that she'll just keep going. Sarita suggests they stick together, but Lily isn't sure about it. Anyway, I think you can see where this is going. Lily is extremely hesitant, but because of Sarita's kindness and a few circumstances that make the two work together, they end up becoming friends. After traveling together for months and Lily opening up just a little bit more, the two end up on a bridge. There, they meet a man named Matthew, who is more than happy to welcome them into his home at the ski lodge. After entering, they're greeted by Walter, and with the compassion and empathy shown by these three new people in her life, Lily is able to open up a lot more. She becomes more mellowed out and accepts her emotions rather than shoving them away like she did at the Delta. Of course, she's not fully over any of the things that happened with the old group, but she's trying. She's got a whole new life now, with all that stuff behind her. Until one fateful day. We skip up to Season 2, Episode 2. Clementine and Luke attempt to cross a bridge when they are met by Matthew. However, while their interaction starts off positive, that's cut short when Nick aims his rifle and shoots Matthew. This causes the man to tumble off the bridge and fall to his death. Luke and the others are ticked off at Nick for just killing some random nice guy, but they continue on until they arrive outside a ski lodge. After climbing the watchtower, Clementine hears some yelling and arguing and climbs down. As she makes her way through the group to see what's going on, she sees no other than Lily. The two exchange surprised expressions, and Clem basically has similar dialogue options that she got with Kenny. Although, there'd probably be one that is also slightly malignant since Lily did kill Carly slash Doug. She also potentially took the RV if Lee kept her around, but the option to hug Lily would still be there since she's a familiar face which a young kid like Clem would need after having a desperate time. No matter what you choose, Lily will feel her past creeping up on her and everyone will calm down with her telling them to come inside. 
She tells all of them to leave their guns, and they reluctantly do so. Lily and Clementine sit on the couch and talk, with Lily having a similar reaction to Lee not being there as she did in season four. Lee isn't with you. So he's dead then. However, her dialogue differs very much from there. She says that she wasn't expecting either of them to show up, so just one is a good enough surprise. As Clementine, the choices in dialogue would be to say how she got Lee killed, how Lee saved her, or to state that Lily didn't really care. For the first option, Lily would reply that she's sure Lee made his own choices, as he always did. The second, she'd mention that Lee did what he thought was right, and if Lee killed Larry, that it was even if she didn't agree. The final option leads to Lily saying that she does care. Lee was one of the only strong people in the group, and from that point, Lily acknowledges what she'd done to Carly slash Doug and denounces her actions that night. She never meant for things to escalate that far, but they did, and it's her fault. Again, we're seeing just how different Lily's feelings on what she did have become due to the influence of good people instead of the hardened force that is the Delta. Instead of justifying her decision and refusing to look back with regret, she feels sorry for what she had done. She's learned how to accept the regret she felt immediately after pulling the trigger instead of pushing it away. After Lily's apology, Clementine can either accept it, acknowledge that the only thing she can do now is make up for it, or say that she won't forgive her. Depending on what Lee did following Lily's murder, a fourth dialogue option will open up. If Lee let Lily stay, Clementine can ask, is that why you stole the RV? Because you were sorry? And if Lee left Lily behind, she gets the option to say that they shouldn't have left her. So yeah, you kind of get a free choice on how you feel about what Lily had done. If you're kinder to her, she'll appreciate it. If you feel more neutral, she'll let you know that she's making up for what she's done. And if you're resentful, she can only be hurt by your words. Lily asks where the group ended up, similar to Kenny, and Clem can talk about the most important moment to her. It could be that they got to Savannah and she got kidnapped, that she met two new people and they were her new group, or that they teamed up with some other survivors to get a boat working. After that, Lily decides to go get some supplies outside, which Luke and Nick help her with. Clementine does her usual stuff around the ski lodge until she and Walter head outside. Lily steps outside again to check the windows, and the three run into Bonnie. Lily is unsure about trusting her, but isn't quite as stern as Kenny due to what she'd gone through. Walter gives Bonnie the supplies, and she leaves. After Walter finds out what's happened to Matthew, the wind turbine starts spinning out of control. This is where a somewhat interesting change occurs. Originally, Kenny thought the transformer blew cutting the power, so he and Luke headed out to check the transformer. But when Sarita wanted to go, Kenny told her no out of fear that she'd be in danger. But here, Lily would be the one going in Kenny's place, and I doubt she'd deny her best friend who saved her to come help. So Lily, Luke, and Sarita head off as the group fixes the turbine. A ton of walkers show up, so they fight them off. But I'm gonna say that without Sarita there to help clear the walkers, they'd be in more danger. This causes Clementine to fight off more walkers, so when she finds Nick being attacked, she inadvertently leads to more of them showing up. If you vouched for Nick, Walter will save him initially, but with Clem being attacked, Nick would try and help, only to be killed anyway. And if you didn't vouch, Walter just lets Nick die and then barely saves Clem. Carver and his men show up, and Clem would either hide with Rebecca and Alvin, or go find Lily, Luke, and Sarita. If she does the first option, they eventually turn themselves in, and Lily and Sarita both plan on shooting Carver, as I think Lily being around somewhat empowers Sarita as opposed to Kenny, making her more of a submissive person. We saw that she could be independent with her personality, but Kenny being there just kind of dropped her down a peg. With Clementine there or not, both women would fire, killing the random goon and injuring Carver right off the bat. This causes Carver to kill Walter and shoot Carlos in the hand. He yells that they killed one of his and shot him. They can do the math on the retaliation. Their choices are clear. Give up now, or you can add another bullet to one of their people. Lily opts to switch outposts, with Sarita staying at the same one just to make sure they have every angle. Clem goes with Lily if she's there. I think judging by Lily's response to the bandits attacking the motel, she'd want to use this sniper advantage as much as she can. Not to mention her sorrow at Walter's death blinding her. So she readies a signal to Sarita to fire again when Carver grabs Alvin. Clem can tell her to shoot, in which case both Sarita and Lily would fire, causing Carver a second injury, although one shot misses. Or you can say Troy gets an injury, either way. Carver's gonna get even more furious and gun down Alvin with no remorse. His next target is gonna be Carlos or Clem if she stayed inside. But I think Lily and Sarita would give up here. Now if you stopped Lily by convincing her, neither her nor Sarita would fire. And if you grab the gun as Lily fires, Sarita will still shoot and miss, causing Alvin to die anyway. And if you stayed inside to try and save Alvin, 
Carver would grab Clem instead, causing an early end to that clash. But after that, everyone's done and they all get taken to house, minus Luke. Now that everyone has been taken by Carver, they'd be placed into the back of the cargo truck. Instead of rashly trying to come up with an escape plan, Lily asks for information about the guy who took them and what they're in for going forward, since our cabin group has dealt with him before. She questions what their odds of escaping are once they get inside rather than before. As Clem, you can help ask important questions, scold Lily, or just express your dislike of the situation. When you get into house, I don't think Lily is going to be as ticked off by Reggie as Kenny was, but she does try to plan with Clem to scope the place out. Even if Clem dislikes Lily, she asks her to work with her here so they can all benefit. Anyway, the first few parts of the day go the same as in canon, so Clem works with Bonnie, Carver shoves Reggie off the roof, etc. But when Clem goes to bring back a bucket of nails to the workers, she finds Mike and Lily actually working together. I don't see Lily trying to beat up Mike for asking her to work, so that's why. Kenny's kind of insane. I am a Christian man. Because of that, no walkers break in, and Clem is able to go about her business after talking to Lily briefly. She's grabbed by Luke, who reveals himself to her and explains his plan with the radios. I do think Lily would have a similar plan to everyone else, with getting Luke the radio and then escaping with the herd, though she'd be a lot more level-headed about it than Kenny, and admit the plan has flaws. However, Jane approaches and tells them how to walk through herds, which Clementine is able to support via her own experience with Lee. After Clementine steals a radio, instead of Kenny's dialogue about Duck, Lily would tell Clem that her work today reminded her of Lee. Depending on his decisions in Season 1, Lily would say that even if she didn't like his choices, she always respected the way he'd step up when necessary. The next day, Lily wouldn't oppose Mike trying to get Luke the radio, so unless Clem decides to, I think he'd be the one to do it. But it doesn't amount to much due to Luke not being found by Carver. I'm not exactly sure how Carver finds Luke with a radio before they give him one, but that's what happens in the game, so I guess it's the same thing. Here we get an interesting split on what comes next. If Mike took the radio, he'd fess up to Carver stepping forward. Mike, of all the people I thought might pull this little charade, your name wasn't high on the list. Mike replies to Carver that he's sorry, handing the radio over, and Carver then tells him that sorry isn't gonna cut it, before slamming the walkie-talkie into Mike's skull. He then proceeds to beat down on him further, though not as brutally as he did with Kenny, since Mike really hasn't been nearly as much trouble as Kenny was canonically. Everyone would be upset about this, but I don't see anybody rushing to help him. Except maybe Clementine if you feel inclined, but she'd be taken down by Troy quite quickly. Anyway, if Clem kept the walkie, Lily would step up in her place. She hands it to Carver, and he does the same thing to her as well, though once again, probably not as brutally as he did to Kenny since she is a woman, and also, she wasn't as big of a nuisance as Kenny was. But that being said, it's not like Carver's not a brutal person, so she would still be beaten quite bad, especially because she did shoot him at least once. Here, you can help Carlos hold back Sarita or rush in to help Lily, but either way, nothing really changes. Hopefully, though, your Clementine is beginning to forgive Lily for what she's done, if you haven't already. The night arrives, and Luke plans to escape then and there, even if they've got to leave people behind. This would either be Lily or Mike, depending on who got the beatdown. Clementine is probably going to feel guilty about what happened, though, given how she either chose to let Mike do the plan instead of doing it herself, or Lily took the blame for her. So, I'd imagine she'd want to defend the idea of not leaving them behind. Luckily, Lily and Mike get up at the same time Kenny does, maybe a little bit later since I just don't see them as as durable as Kenny, but they also didn't get beaten as bad, so I think the damage to the eye would kind of pretty much do the same thing. Which means now we've got eye patch Lily slash Mike. The plan then carries out with Clementine setting off the PA system only to return and fight Carver aiming a gun at the group. Here, she can either choose to shoot Carver with the pistol or jump onto his back if Alvin used it in his last stand. After that, Lily and Luke combo Carver, and Luke takes his gun. They briefly discuss what to do with him before a bullet is fired, hitting Carver dead in the face. Everyone turns to see Lily standing with a pistol in her hand. Sarita is kind of surprised to see this side of Lily, but Clementine knows it already. Sarita asks if she's alright, and Lily shrugs it off, and she's especially cold if she got the beatdown prior. If not, Mike would simply thank her, since he got the beatdown instead and wanted revenge. Lily then says let's go, and everyone heads outside. I'd like to just add the fact, Eye Patch Kenny is so awesome when he first shows up, and Eye Patch Lily gunning down Carver would be insane as well. Especially because, like I said before, we've seen Lily do this kind of thing before. She can be very unpredictable when she's unstable. 
Everyone covers themselves in the guts, Jane obliterates Troy's ability to have children, and the group sneaks through the herd. Well, they sneak until Carlos is shot in the neck and devoured by walkers, causing Sarah to run off. After fighting off some walkers, Clementine finds Sarita being bitten on the wrist and can either kill the walker or cut the arm off. This choice goes pretty much the same way it did canonically though, though I don't think Lily is going to blame Clementine unless she cuts her arm off. Because that's where Clem basically sentences Sarita to death. I mean, she cut off her arm in the middle of a herd. Lily's obviously going to be furious about that. But now you're about to be furious because I'm ending this video. We're going to leave this part here as part one. If you guys like this series, I will definitely be sure to drop part two soon. And I know the changes are kind of minuscule so far. You know, I mean, Nick dies no matter what. Sarita and Lily are kind of friends, but it looks like Sarita is about to die anyway. But trust me, these changes explode a little bit more toward the end of season two going forward. And Lily has way more room to develop as a character now since she's got the whole rest of the season, and maybe more. A quick shout out to our members, Kyler Fiend, Ellie to Plug 2, Derpy Murloc, Wax and Parrot Fish, Paul Keen, and Funklocks. I appreciate every single one of you for supporting the channel and helping to make more content. But as always, tell me if you like this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your request for future videos, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.